What's up everybody and welcome back to Operation Overhaul and today is going to be the final part of the AFM delete on this engine. It is the Tahoe with the 5.3 and as you can see we have the valley cover in place. The bolts aren't ran down or torqued or anything and we have the cam, the timing chains, oil pump, uh, the lifter trays with the lifters in there as you can see but we do have to torque down everything i do have all the torque specs the valley cover goes to 18 foot pounds the lifter trays are 106 inch pounds then the front uh i can't talk but the front uh, cam bolt torques to uh 55 foot pounds and like i said we've already got it installed it's at the uh, right timing marks and everything but I'm going to torque down the valley cover and also just as a reminder you're going to have to switch over your oil pressure sensor on this one uh, we did use the old one you can put a new one in if you'd like but this car only has like 90,000 miles on it so it's not a lot of miles and we're going to go ahead and get to it and torque this down like I said I'm not going to show a whole lot of the installation procedure I'm just going to show like the most critical parts of this but we're going to torque down the valley cover right now and torque down the lifter trays. And then I'm going to go get my a digital torque wrench to torque down like the cam and cylinder heads and stuff. But once I get all this torque down and I'll get to the next step, I'll come right back. Okay, so I got one of the heads on right now. I don't have it torqued down. But I did just run the bolts right here and the ones inside just hand tight. I didn't like crank down on them or anything, but I did just run them down just until they were just snug. But the sequence we're going to do is start in, start in the center and you're going to work your way out into a circle uh, from the center to the outsides and you're going to go clockwise is how I normally do it. But the small bolts, they torque to 22. And you're gonna do that on the first steps to the M8s and the uh, M11 bolts. You're gonna go to 22 foot-pounds. And that will be the final torque on the little ones. But on the M11, the bigger ones, they will torque to 22 first, then you'll go 90 degrees, and then you'll go an additional 70 degrees. But like I said, I only have one cylinder head on right now. And I'm just going to do one at a time, but we're going to go ahead and torque this down. And then I'm going to get back to you once I get ready to put the timing cover on. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this situated. Like I said, I already have the timing chain and the cam gear and all that stuff torqued down. And we're getting closer to getting it done. So I'll be back in just a few minutes and we'll uh, get started on the timing cover. So I got the heads on now. Uh, they're torqued down and I've already got the rocker arms and the uh, push rods in on this one. But I'm doing that to the uh, passenger side now. And just so y'all know, this is what I did right here put them in a piece of cardboard and labeled them and put them all back in the uh, appropriate cylinders and if it come out of intake or exhaust uh, I know most you know that these are all the same length but I still like to do this just because they uh, can develop a wear pattern inside of the rock arms if it's brand new uh, it really doesn't matter so I'm gonna put some assembly lube on the tip of this and I'm going to stick it into the uh, lifter and I got it on there and then we're just going to stick it down in here until we find the lifter and then you push down you can push the lifter out of the tray now I'm going to go through and put a little bit of assembly lube on each one of the push rods I can get them on there just so when I put the rocker arms on they don't start up dry as well and this is what I'm using right here it's just stay lube it's just from CRC I've had good luck with this uh, you can 
use a variety of things but i typically use this because it's pretty readily available and it works really good all right let me set you down and i'm going to show you uh me torquing down the rock arm assembly those torque to 22 foot pounds as well this may not be the best angle uh, for the opposite side i should have done that side first but this side right here i was already putting that together but it's going to be the same thing for both sides and as you can see from here put a, some of the assembly lube on top of the valves as well And on top of these rock arm assemblies, they are an eight millimeter. And I'm just gonna run them down, starting in the middle and just going back and forth. All right, and I have my torque wrench set to 22 already. Like I said, start in the middle and just go back and forth all the way down the line. And double check it after We've run down them because they can spread out the load. All right, and now we got the valve train in with the heads torqued down. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and throw the spark plugs back in on this side. I already have them in on the driver's side. Once we do that, we can lift the exhaust up and get it started bolted back up. And once I get ready to put that on, I'll show you what the torque spec and everything is. And then whenever I get ready to put the timing cover on, I'll show you the special tool that I use. Uh, I am waiting on it at the moment to get here because my other one I let somebody borrow and I don't have it right now. So I have another one coming. I like to have a couple of them just in case I'm, like I said, just in case I have somebody borrow one. But as soon as it comes in, I'll show you what it looks like. As you can see, I do have most of it put back together. All I really have left to do is put the radiator in and do the dipstick and just button up a few little things but i wanted to go over some of the installation procedures and torque specs on this stuff and the one thing that i wanted to really show was this tool right here i don't know if, you can, if it'll focus a little bit there we go this is a timing cover alignment tool for these ls series engines i'll put a uh, link in the bottom in the description as to where you can get this this tool is about forty dollars and what it does is it goes in where the front main seal goes you slide it around like through there and then slide the cover on and then you can tighten down the cover bolts on here and it uh, makes sure that your uh, front cover is aligned because if you don't do that you can wear that front seal out uh, shortly after you start the engine and the front cover torques to 22 foot pounds on this vehicle and that goes for the valley cover as well torques to 22 foot pounds then after we put that on we put the harmonic balancer on and it uses a 24 millimeter bolt we did get a brand new one with the kit the way you have to torque that on is you have to torque it to 110 foot pounds loosen it up 360 degrees then torque it to uh, 55 foot pounds and then an additional 120 degrees and i think the torque spec comes up to be i think around whenever i did it it was around like 154 or something like that. that's whenever i did mine but it's going to vary just because it is a degree and not an exact number that you have to go to but that is how i did that then all the brackets and stuff, I just tightened them up by hand. I mean, I know there's torque specs to it, but you don't have to, like, crank down on them, you know, to 100 foot-pounds or any of that stuff. Then one other thing I really wanted to showcase was this belt right here. This is a stretch belt, and they are a pain to get on if you have never done them. Uh, the way that I put it on was 
I wrapped a zip tie around this pulley right here and as you can see it's got the cutouts in it. I wrapped a zip tie around that and put it around the AC pulley and just slowly uh, turn the engine over by hand. And another person or two is good to have with you when you're doing this just so they can help guide everything on. I had uh, my wife help me do it and it took us probably, I don't know, 30 minutes or so to get it on here just because it kept wanting to slide off of the underside of the AC. But that's pretty much everything on here. Like I said, I just have to do the dipstick, the radiator, and the thermostat. But I wanted to show you some part numbers of some stuff that I had to get additionally. The belt number is right there. If it'll focus, uh, 2482 1MX. I believe that is, it's a Gates number as well. And then there's the other part numbers, K040355SF. Then, this is the thermostat that I got right here. This is an OE uh, temperature. I think it was like 184 degrees. But it's a Murray and it's a 52360. And the plugs I bought were these right here. Uh, yeah, they're AC Delco Iridiums 1941705. But we put all new plugs in that and then we put dielectric grease on the inside the boots just so they don't get seized to the spark plugs or the coils themselves right here. But we got everything pretty much buttoned up. Uh, I'm going to finish putting the radiator and all this stuff in and then whenever I get ready to program out the DOD AFM system, I'm going to bring you back and show you how to do that with HP tuners. So let me finish this up and I'll be right back. So I have HP tuners hooked up right now and I've already went through the read procedure on this. Once you open it up, it's not going to have any of these icons up here. You're just going to have to go to flash and read vehicle. It took about seven or eight minutes for it to read everything on this 2011. We do have a check engine light on. I checked it in the diagnosis part of HP tuners, but it has pretty much all the cylinders, uh, all the sensors, I mean, have codes on. It's just because everything's been disconnected and reconnected and the engine hasn't like crank up and ran or anything. But we're gonna fix all that with the HP tuners. So when you come back over here, we're gonna go to hit your engine and it should be, normally it starts off in general, but you'll go to fuel, and whenever you open fuel, it should be in the general tab as well. But if you go to lean slash fuel savings, you'll see this right here. And it's got DOD, that's displacement on demand. And it has to see all of these conditions right here in order to enable the drive on demand. But what we're going to do is we're going to disable this and it should turn a different color you see how it turned red right there and before I did this now whenever it read everything it popped up a save screen and I saved it uh, in my HP tuners logs and tunes and I saved it as before or you can put any name you want to but I just put before uh, delete as the file name and once you this, uh, go through and save that that way if you ever want to revert it back you can in case somebody else wants to have that on their vehicle but we did the full delete so it won't work it'll throw a check engine light for that if they try to enable it again but we all we did was we just disabled it and you can exit out of that all right so something i forgot to mention in the last part was i forgot to rewrite it to the computer so whenever i test drove it i didn't actually flash it to the computer and now this is what it's doing uh, once you have it saved the file saved go in and write it back up here with like this little black arrow or red arrow with the black microchip and that's what it's doing now is it's reprogramming everything with the new delete in it and it may take a few minutes to do it, 
Uh, so I'm not going to show it to you completely. Sorry, you can probably see my reflection, my eyes itching. <laughs> but I'm going to let it do its thing, and then we're going to come back once I've test drove it again to make sure that everything went as planned. All right, so I just got back from a test drive. As you can see, the vehicle is off at the moment. I'm going to crank her up. There is no check engine lights. Uh, the temperature is good. Voltage is good. Oil pressure. All this stuff right here is doing good. And we took it on the interstate just to make sure because I live probably about two miles from the interstate. So I took it up the interstate just to make sure that everything was good now. And she didn't pop up any uh, V4 mode or DOD mode or any of that stuff. So the program worked. Like I said, whenever you do that, just make sure that you flash it to the computer. I did forget to do that, and I left that out in the video. But the system that I use was right here. This is the MPVI2 from HP Tuners. And I had to uh, add another credit to it, so that took a little bit longer than I thought it would. But I had to resync it about three times for it to recognize the credits too before I could uh, flash it to it. But everything went good. And if there's any comments, concerns, or if you need any specs that I left out in the video series, please uh, just leave a comment with what you need and I'll get it to you as soon as possible. And sorry that the video series was a little hectic. I was trying to cut out all the unnecessary stuff on the video and the repair procedure because there was a lot that went into this as you got to remove heads and uh, harmonic balancer, water pump, timing covers, and lining everything back up and remove the oil pan and stuff like that. Like I said, it was just a lot to do in like one video so I want to do it over multiple videos and knock out all the unnecessary stuff that you really don't care to see to make it boring but if you enjoyed the series or if you enjoyed uh, this video you know consider giving it a thumbs up a like and maybe even a subscription as I do post a lot of con uh, content on cars and I do just about any car it's not just Chevy's or anything but I do work on all makes and models and if you have anything you would like to see in the future please leave a comment below as well on that and I'll see what I can do to get that to y'all and until next time y'all have a great day